Hello everybody and welcome to Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom and I am so delighted uh, to be in the company of Michelle Stringer. Michelle is Head of Training and Education at the Association of Reflexologists and we're in her log cabin and it's amazing. It really, really is. Michelle, welcome to Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom. Thank you so much for being with us. Or thank rather, you thank, you for, well, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for having me. So, what I wanted to talk about was the AI, well, what you do, um, why it's a really, really good idea for schools to be linked with the Association of Reflexologists, and then, of course, there's this brand new Gateway Schools. So, I suppose, start at the beginning, your job at the AOR, tell us what you do, who you are, and... So, yeah, so I'm... Um Training and Education Manager at yep. the AOR. i um, been there just over a year now, so I feel like I've got my feet under the table a little bit. Um, the role is um, so varied. Um, I didn't quite realise how varied it would be. Um, but I get to support amazing tutors like yourself and um, schools um, across the country. Um, we're really striving at the moment. One of the biggest things we're trying to do is to um, really promote quality qualifications yes um as you know and i'm sure a lot of people that are watching this will, will hopefully know that there's such an array of of quality out there when it comes to reflexology qualifications so that is one of my biggest um projects at the moment biggest um you know biggest things that i'm trying to sort of tackle mm. Um, whether it's sort of in that regulated sector or, or unregulated sector, there's a lot to really think about when choosing a, a qualification. Oh my goodness, yes. It's a minefield. It really is. It really is. So it's, um, yeah, it's a big task and uh, trying to get the right information to the right people. Yeah is hard this obviously really helps because hopefully everyone that's watching you know if you if there's people starting out on their reflexology journey it might just make them think a little bit about oh yeah what is out there and am yes. i choosing the right the right qualification yeah. um so yeah that, that's one of my biggest things at the moment within the AOR um, that I'm trying to uh, to get on top of, really. Brilliant. Well, I'll tell you what then, there are so many times where I've watched or listened to, but we'll come back to that and we'll tell you later. So tell us now, what is the right <laughs> qualification? <laughs> so, um, well, so the AOR at the moment, we're trying to sort of become the hub for the, the quality qualification that meets the AOR's yes. eligibility criteria, because... Yes. Um, uh, you know, we've got our criteria for membership, and I'm not saying that that is the be all and end all of reflexology qualifications, but I think it does set quite a high bar. Um, so we would, you know, we want to be the place where people come to look for a, a qualification mm. and, and a course to, to go and enrol on. Um, what makes a good course, what makes a good qualification in the AOR's eyes um, and in my eyes? It's um, something that's regulated or university accredited or credit rated mm -hmm. um, because then that means that that qualification has to meet and sit on a qualification framework that the government have, have put together. Yes. So it has to meet a minimum criteria. Yeah. Um, there are amazing unregulated qualifications out there. However, they can chop and change whenever they want. They don't have to meet any particular criteria. Yeah. And this is where the regulation comes in and makes a huge difference um, in terms of us being able to have the reassurance that anybody that's done that qualification has met a minimum criteria. Yes. Um, and that's all through external moderation and that's that's what drives the, the reassurance for us for, for membership. Yeah. Yeah. Um, within that qualification though uh, is the way it's delivered. Mm -hmm. And um, the AOR have got, a, again, a, a criteria for the way that qualifications are delivered, and we ask for at least 49 hours of face-to-face -face, uh, teaching, which is actually, the you know, that's the minimum. And we yes. do say that's the minimum. <coughs> um, and, and if I'm right yeah. in thinking, that doesn't include exams? Not including stuff. exams. That is exactly. on the reflexology module. So this, is, a, this module. is just study. Yeah, it's yeah. reflexology module, really. Um, yeah. You know, it's 49 hours on that reflexology module yeah. um, because the qualification is made up of, of four main modules 
and then there's that's for the level three yeah and then there's the level five yep. which has then got um additional modules that's it. um that that people can obviously take on board as well and come out with a bit extra at the end of their yeah. um qualification yeah so you know there's there's the level three and level five so when you're looking at qualifications it's looking at the content and what you want what you want to come out with of a qualification um you know i, I kind of describe it that level three puts foundation blocks in place and then you can build on that with CPD. Mm -hmm. Level five puts those same foundation blocks in place, but there's that heavy research element within yep. it, embedded within the whole of the yep. qualification. And then you've got the additional layers that you've also got that CPD element built into the qualification. There is, but also, of course, there's the extra depth and breadth that you would expect yes. at a level five. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So they're the, the kind of difference between level three and level five. They both allow you to become a reflexologist at the end yes. um, and um, give you a really good foundation to grow yeah. from. The sort of analogy that I have between, because some people will be thinking, regulated? What does regulated mean? is that <clears throat> for level three, for example, that's a nice easy one to, to, to give the example for. That's equivalent to an A-level. And it's a qualification everybody understands. Yes. And the difference between regulated and non-regulated would be like a tutor. Tell me whether I've got this one wrong, by the way. Do, please. <laughs> but the, the, the regulated is going to a college or a school or whatever and studying and taking the exam and getting the qualification. That's your regulated and you yeah. get a proper off-qual certificate or off-qual endorsed certificate at the end of it. So you've, yes. you've actually got your proper qualification. Yes. The unregulated, I would sort of give the analogy, they may be getting the learning from a home tutor, something like that, who could be teaching the content yep could be the same content could even be the same content but there is no oversight by of qual an awarding body and there is no qualification recognized by everybody at the end of it and that's the biggest difference if you've done a regulated qualification everybody recognizes that qualification exactly if you do unregulated well, maybe the school that delivered it recognises it, but somebody comes along to the AOR, for instance, and, and says, you've got no idea who they are, have yeah, you? Exactly, and we've got no idea of the, the content of that qualification either, because as I said before, that can change at any time, and we yeah. can't always keep up to date with, with the content of that unregulated yeah. qualification. Yeah. And then that leads us in very nicely to gateway schools. I was just going to bring that one up. <laughs> now then, I'm just going to do something here because by the magic of editing, right above us, right now, is the gateway logo. You'll be able to see this and this is what you want to look out for. If you want to be absolutely sure that uh, the school that you're looking at is delivering the right kind of qualification that Michelle's talking about, look up for this. It's going to disappear just now. And anyway, carry on, okay. So the Gateway <laughs> School Programme. Um, so this has been, um, it's a newly branded um, programme that the AOR are, are running. So it's, it, it's, it's exactly the same as, as how we've run things before, but it's just got, got a new brand name of Gateway Schools. Yep. And this is the schools who um, choose, you know, the schools choose to come to us um, and, um, you know, be advertised by the AOR. And they are schools that we know um, are meeting the AOR's minimum criteria for membership. Yeah. And the reason that they meet that is because they're delivering a quality qualification that's regulated or university accredited or credit rated. They are running um, that qualification and delivering that qualification in a way that meets all the rest of our criteria as well. And, um, you know, and we, we have a relationship with them too, mm. which is, I think, really important to understand too. They're not just there on a, on a screen and, you know, they're there for you to, to see and, and click on. We, the AOR have a relationship with these schools. Um, we try to offer the school support. Um, so, you know, from a, from a school's point of view, there's, there's support that we've just introduced tutor zooms. 
yep. um, which I know that you came along to the, the yeah. first one. Um, and uh, I think, you know, as, as they, they go on, that will be really, really good for networking, um, for tutors and schools. Um, it means that we can all soundboard off each other as well, which which will be lovely and, and try to sort of um, just encourage each other to do. And do then that pushes things. up standards. Exactly. Exactly that. Um, so that that's fantastic. Um, the schools get to use our logo too, as you've just seen. Yeah. Um, Put it back up there again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. And um, you know, the, say that. So there's that that support there for the school. Um, but then that also allows them to have advertising on our website. We do social media advertising of which we're putting together new campaigns. Now, at websites, the how do people find an AOR endorsed, an, an AOR approved school? How, where, how do people find it? Where so, do they go? Well, to find a gateway school, yep. um, you'd go onto the AOR's website, so aor.org.uk. Yep. Uh, click on Train to be a Reflexologist. Yep. And um, on there, there's a map. Um, it's an interactive map, so you can zoom in, zoom out. There's a list of different areas of the UK, so you can search by sort of areas of the UK as well. Find your local school on our map. If there's a few in your area, phone them, have a chat to the tutor. Oh, always. Um, you know, yes. Yeah, I think that's so important, and people are sometimes a bit afraid to do that, but, but don't be afraid. Do you know, I get worried when people <laughs> just book on my courses, and I've never heard of them before. Because I'm thinking, have they read everything? I can only assume they have, so sometimes I'll actually phone them up and just make sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's always a good idea too. And I mean, I don't know whether other places do, but we actually, I mean, you're gonna be coming along to our exam days. Because um, Michelle now is just around the corner from where I am, which is wonderful. Um, but if they've got the option of being able to come in and have a look at what's going yeah, on. We, exactly. we always encourage that. Exactly. Because if you don't hit it off with your tutor, you could have a whole year of study and you're like, oh no, I've got to go and see that yeah, person again. You know, that relationship with the tutor, I think, is really important mm. and making sure that you, you're going to be able to learn from them. But also just understanding the commitment that you're making, because I think reflexology is one of those courses that people go into not necessarily understanding the full commitment mm. and it is a big commitment that's not to put people off but it is a bigger commitment than most people think it is at the beginning yeah. um it's not going to take over your life but it is um something that you need to be able to dedicate a bit of time to learning and studying um and if you want to do it properly and you want a proper regulated qualification at the end of it it's yeah. going to take a bit of time to get there absolutely um and a bit of effort so it's um understanding that commitment seeing the venue and other learners on the course is actually quite a nice way to see whether you are going to fit into that environment as yeah. well um so yeah. and get the students to dish all the dirt yeah. on their tutor as well <laughs> hopefully it's all good dirt it's fine oh it's all the healthy dirt <laughs> that's it absolutely um, so yeah, it's 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 fantastic. So definitely phone phone the school, have a chat with the tutor if possible, and the time works. Go in and actually spend some time in the, yes. in the venue um, while there's teaching happening. Um, is is just a great way to 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 know whether that's going to be the right course before you enrol. Yeah. So yeah, can't recommend that enough. Um, definitely the way to go. Um, with that and obviously choosing the right school in the in the beginning and then once they've actually decided to enroll the the students also can um become aor student members student members yes um which is fantastic and by doing that they get access to the student area on our website which yep. has got lots of helpful <clears throat> things um they can use our student logo yep. um they get direct access to become a full member at the end of the graduation uh, which is fantastic, and they get three months free um, full membership with us as well. I'll tell you what, why would anybody not <laughs> want to do this? I've missed off the most important oh, thing oh, about student membership. Oh, go on. The insurance is included. Oh, it is? Yes. Yes. So they're insured with Alan Boswell, yep. and um, they get their insurance so they're covered for all their case studies. That's it. So this is, this is for all the time that you are a student member you get this free insurance. Has it got an actual life time, time 
limit on it? Or? Uh, so they, they get it for the um, duration of the, of the course, the course, which we normally say up to a, a year, a, an academic year yes. to 18 months. But yes. then um, if there's any reason that that needs to be extended. So if for any reason something happens in your life and you don't manage to get all your case studies finished by the end of the course mm -hmm. and your tutor is very lovely and allows you to, to do your case studies carry on. and carry on a bit. Which of course we all course, do. Which all, all our tutors, all the, nice all the tutors lovely do. gateway school That's tutors right. do. And, um, you know, we, we all know that life happens. Oh, doesn't it? <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's... It's great because there is extensions you can add on yeah. and, and all sorts of things. We're not just going to kick you out of student membership just because you haven't completed Perfect. your case studies. Why would anybody not want to do this? Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. Um, and then, you know, once you're a full member, you get to come and talk to wonderful people like myself. And, Indeed. Uh, Tracy Smith and, and Kate and Mullis on the advice line. And, yeah. and we've got so much support there. Yeah. And we're offering, when I said about the tutor Zooms mm -hmm. that we're doing, we've also got student Zooms and graduate Zooms um, where we're um, allowing students and, and graduates to, to basically ask the AOR questions. And then you've got a fabulous Facebook members area we where do. there's amazing questions and fabulous support as yeah. well. I think when you're a student, whilst you can gain access to it, it can sometimes be a bit overwhelming. So it's something to... Um, just remember that the people that are on there have been reflexologists for years there's or there might be new reflexologists the questions yeah. that get asked might sort of scare you sometimes or might be a bit overwhelming so just remember that that these are all reflexologists from all walks of life and have been trained in so many different styles exactly. so exactly. it might not yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. training and cpd take people <clears throat> on very various roots with reflexology. Do. do you know that's another that's another episode for this then isn't <laughs> CPD it? CPD <laughs> and, and where, where reflexology takes you yes but it's um yeah it's it's fabulous and it's a great tool and I, I think you know definitely for students it's great to have a an understanding of it mm. but when you've got a question we always point students back to tutors because like Which David is, was just saying training varies. It does. Contraindications vary depending on the awarding body. Yes. And it's definitely um, something that the AOR are very aware of and so we will always yeah. point students back to the tutor because I think very that's sensible. the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, we're obviously there for support when needed but we would always say try your tutor first um, and then when you're a full member you you know ask away ask absolutely. questions use it yeah. it's fantastic michelle this has been absolutely fabulous thank you for sharing all this wonderful information about the aor about your role in it and about the gateway schools guys thank you so much for watching wednesday's reflexology wisdom i hope you've learnt loads if you've never met michelle before now you know her and if you are thinking about uh learning reflexology then um michelle and the aor website that is a great place to go of course and i um, mean obviously i would say come along to my school but there are loads and loads of other great 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 schools um so thank you very much for watching do stay well stay safe and we'll see you next week <laughs> <laughs>